and welcome to Political Quickie, your political show that subjectively discusses current affairs in South Africa and all around the world. My name is Map Asik Amura. Mm, yes, I have been on a four-week hiatus. <laughs> I've been AWOL. And I apologize because it was unannounced. I just disappeared. Um, my explanation is that we had the elections and I was doing commentary around that and that was a lot of work. And then immediately after that, I had my exam. So absolutely i had to disappear and then after that literally a week later um i finished writing i got a new job and so um they've been trying to juggle reading because absolutely i never ever want to create content on a whim like oh my gosh this is trending or this is interesting and then come sit here and just talk about stuff when it's not well researched and i have not thoroughly thought about my subjective opinion to give you guys um so yeah finally found my feet and i feel like now i have the time to be able to give you guys a thoroughly researched content okay okay all right so the only thing that's changed is that right now you know, I'll be uploading once a week, so you can let me know, do you want Political Quickie on a Thursday night or on a Friday morning? So you will let me know, and then, yeah, I shall upload, okay? <laughs> I shall upload. Anyways, let's get straight into the news today. The African Union had its 12th Extraordinary Summit on the 7th of July in Niger, where it launched the operational phase of the African Continental Free Trade Agreement. Yes. So, Nigeria finally came to the party and signed the agreement uh, after extensive consultation in the country all right now you'll remember that the agreement actually needed 22 uh, member states to ratify it in order for it to come into operation and that happened um on the 29th of april this year and then 30 days later on the 30th of may it came into operation for the first time for those member states that had ratified it at the time the african continental free trade agreement Agreement aims to create a single goods and services market with the free movement of business people and investments. It also aims to increase intra-African trade as well as to support economic transformation. The African Continental Free Trade Agreement along with the free movement of people and the single African air transport market are the three flagships of agenda 2063 the most important document in this instance would be the agreement establishing the african continental free trade area and it regulates trade and goods services um investments intellectual property rights as well as competition now the idea is that we remove tariffs of 90% of goods in Africa. With a population of 1.2 billion people and a GDP of $3.4 trillion, this is the biggest trade zone in the world! Okay, in the world! All right. So while you're at it and you're celebrating, um, go ahead and read the protocol on the treaty establishing the African Economic Community. Under this treaty, Africans will be able to move freely. We'll have what we call an African passport. <laughs> okay? And um, workers will be able to travel all over Africa and work wherever they want. Um, there will be a mutual recognition of qualifications. You'll be able to drive your car throughout the whole of Africa. Okay, so that is the one Africa. <laughs> That we're working towards, right? We also understand that there will be challenges, okay? This is not going to take, like, you know, a few months to implement. It, it's going to take years for all of us to get it right, okay? And also the challenges of the West and, you know, the imperialists who might not like what is currently going on in Africa um, and everything that has to do with the African continental free trade area. Um, so my thing, my, my two concerns, the first thing would be multinational corporations is, and just white monopoly capital in general. Um, you know, these companies that come from abroad and come to Africa, that they might be the ones that benefit the most and exploit, uh, you know, the one African market totally. So small businesses, small African businesses need to be protected absolutely. The second thing would be that, you know, the strategy of the West um, towards Africa has always been divide and conquer. And so I, I am afraid that, you know, we might see tribal or nationalist um, scuffles on the way. But I trust that we are conscious enough and we are mature enough and ready enough 
to handle that when it comes or if it even comes. I think what I would love to see in future would be the inclusion of the entire African diaspora. So I would love to see the inclusion of Jamaica, Barbados and, you know, just, you know, everyone in the African diaspora and hoping that at some point we'll be able to establish one language and we'll speak one language, even if it's like our business language, that one language where I can be in Kenya, I can be in Uganda, I can be in Botswana, and I can also go to, again, Barbados and still speak that same language because it is our African language. So, you know, I live in hope. And in, in like in dream state for such. But we shall see. Okay, we shall see. So I'm excited. And I hope you guys are too. Ah! I love you guys. I'm so glad to be back. Okay. He's a talent to serve humanity. And I will see you next week. Goodbye.